Hi there, this is Andrew Brody with Yokogawa, and today I'd like to talk to you about the graphic portfolio. It's part of the InfoWell option that can be purchased to run on the Stardom family of controllers. It comes on the NT205AJ CD, and you'll, once you have that CD, you can go ahead and install it, but to actually use it on products like the FCN or the FCJ, you need to make sure you've either got this part number or you've got the overall InfoWell part number. Now, on most of the FCN RTUs that we sell in uh, North America, we include this as standard uh, licensing or standard functionality on the RTU. So, what is Graphics Portfolio? It allows you to place uh, custom web pages on the Stardom series of controllers. So, you can have background images, you can overlay data on them. It'll update in real time. You can do some basic animations. You can have links to other pages. You can aggregate data from multiple controllers onto a single web page. So it might be good for uh, OEMs to have their own custom pages on the controller for, I don't know, say you're monitoring tank farms. You can show the various tanks on your farm and level or, or some type of loading station. You can kind of show a real-time overview of that. Maybe it would be good for remote diagnostics. But a nice, nice little capability that differentiates Stardom from standard PLCs out here. So what we're looking at here is the general specification. There's the uh, document number in case you need to find it on the internet. And uh, if we move down a little bit, there's going to be a page here that kind of talks about some of its uh, specifications here that might be of interest to you. So you can do updates as fast as every five seconds, uh, real time. You can have up to 10 clients simultaneously attached. So essentially 10 different copies of uh, web browsers can be attached to the uh, controller and viewing web pages. You're also going to need uh, something capable of displaying Java applets. So this would typically be PCs or even uh, Macs. It's not going to work so great on typical Android tablets or iPads or any of those because None of those are really capable of running Java applets. Okay, so if we move down here, here's another interesting thing here is I can aggregate data from multiple controllers onto a single web page. So up to 10 controllers worth of data can be built into a uh, web page. And then down here is just a little more information on the size of the projects and what type of images can be used within it. And then for the IT folks, these are the ports that need to be open so that we can use this option uh, with Start. So that's the general specification. Another good document is the user's manual. Okay, and the user's manual, here's the document number in case you're looking for it. And it's going to be important to go through this user's manual before you get too involved with the graphics portfolio, just to make sure you understand how the graphics portfolio works and make sure that all the software is installed properly and whether it be on the PC or whether it be on the uh, RTU itself or on the uh, FCN, FCJ. So let's uh, close out that and uh, I'm going to give you a quick basic on the stuff that absolutely has to be done or this won't work. So if we go to the resource configurator and I connect up to my stardom unit. Here's the IP address that I've uh, placed in the unit. Here's the username, password. Default username is stardom lowercase. Default password is Yokogawa, all in uppercase. Go ahead and connect up to it. And the one option that we need to make sure is uh, placed on here is this use Java program. If it's not already checked, you need to check that and then go ahead and uh, click the uh, download button here and that'll go ahead and uh, push it to it. If you're using an FCN or an FCJ, you're going to have had to make sure that the system card was actually purchased with a uh, Java license on it. If not, you're not really going to be able to run this uh, InfoWell style functionality. So I'm going to go out and close that. The next place I want to go to is uh, All Programs, InfoWell, Graphics Portfolio, Graphics Tool. That's the actual graphics tool that we'll be using. When Graphics Tool was installed, 
you were picking a directory when you kind of ran it from the APPF CD. The other thing that you're going to have to have made sure you did was uh, go to, this is the directory I installed it to, Yokogawa InfoWell. You're going to have had to have gone to this setup directory and ran this FCX setup. This will actually place some files on the RTU itself. You're going to need to know the IP address of the RTU or uh, the FCN or FCJ that you're pushing it to. But once you run this, it'll ask for the IP address and it'll go ahead and install some InfoWell related files to the unit. So I've already done that, so I'm going to kind of skip that little portion. And I'm going to go straight to the graphics tool here. So before you get too involved with the graphics tool here, make sure that you've kind of already spent some time with the controller, maybe put a small control program on it, because if you don't have any variables and so on residing within it, there's not going to be anything you can really set up and display over here when you set up your web pages. So make sure you do that, otherwise when we go to import the variable names, uh, we won't have any to import. So make sure you've got a little project already up and running. We've got some other videos that cover how to use Logic Designer and how to use the configuration editor to go ahead and uh, build up simple projects. So I'm going to go ahead and go File, New Project. I'm going to give this a uh, name. So I'm just going to call this one uh, My Project. And then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go new controller. And I'm going to enter in the IP address up here. You can put in a comment if you want it, but that's optional. Then you're going to put in the username and password. Once again, uh, default is stardom lowercase. And then capital Yokogawa, all one word, uh, all capitalized for the password. And then I can expand that, and it's going to show me some of the kind of default folders here. Common, that's good where I can have stuff like background images or graphic files, just kind of common resource files that I might use on my web page. And then group, this is where I'm actually going to put my web pages. Uh, if I right-click on group and go modify, I can actually go ahead and change that to some other name should I choose to. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is once I have that IP address there. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go acquire ADLST. This is essentially the variable list. And I'm going to acquire it from the controller. I could also acquire it from the PC if I wanted to. Like say I was doing a uh, offline programming and I've gone ahead and created a project with Logic Designer but I don't have the controller present. I could just go ahead and uh, grab it uh, from a local file on the PC. But in this case I'm going to go directly to the controller. I'm going to go ahead and hit acquire. This will also be a good test if we can connect to the controller. And then I'm going to go acquire. And this should, if everything worked out, go ahead and grab that variable list from the controller. And we can see down here it said it succeeded in the message. If I click on variables list, go over here, we should now see a bunch of variables in there. If I want, I can go ahead and uh, raise it up so I can kind of have a little more room with my variables. If I'm going to be working with multiple controllers, I'll click this because then it'll put an IP address in front of all the variables so I can kind of see which ones I'm dealing with. Okay, so once we've got that, we can go up here to Group, right click on that, and go New Graphic. And we can give this graphic a name, for example, uh, Test Page. and it'll put a test page on the screen there. If I right click on it, I can go graphic properties. This is where I can do stuff like modify the size of it. So uh, how wide it's gonna be, how tall it's gonna be. If I wanna change the background color, I can go ahead and uh, do stuff like uh, change the background color. Background image, if I want to go ahead and put in a background image, we could do that. So maybe I'll go ahead and uh, put in a background image here. Maybe this uh, Yoko logo file I've got here. Now when uh, doing images, it's going to be important that you kind of conform to the rules, which means uh, all the characters for the uh, 
image file name have to be uppercase, and I believe uh, it's limited to a certain amount of characters, like 15 or 16 characters total. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And then you can kind of pick what you're going to do with the image. Are you going to stretch, keep it to its original aspect, stuff like that. And then uh, also pick how often you want to update the page, every 5, 30, 15 seconds. And then in terms of if you have some type of disconnection or communication errors, how often it's going to retry to do the page. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply there. And you can kind of see it's gone ahead and set up Yokogawa as my background image here. All right, so now that we've set up a background image, we've given the page a name, we could start essentially overlaying parts onto it. So let's go down to the parts window here. And it's just literally right click on it. Or sorry, left click. And then uh, go ahead, drop it on the screen. Once you've got the part on the screen, you can go ahead and do some basics, like resize it if you want it. Move it around, and then you can right click on it and go parts properties. Right here is where you could go ahead and put a name into it. This is like a coefficient, so if you wanted to scale the value, you can essentially multiply it by this. You can set up how many digits, how many decimal places. If you want to use a uh, background color, you could go ahead and do that, change the background color. You can also do uh, various things like uh, tie it to a uh, another variable, okay, for uh, changing its color. Okay, so right here, so I'd pick something like uh, background color or text color. I can have those things change. Dynamic data, integer, boolean. I could then go ahead and put a variable here, and then as that integer variable changed from 0 to 7, it could change through all the colors I set up here. Okay, I'm not going to actually kind of uh, get into that too much, but this is kind of a neat little option if you just wanted to have a value change its color, either its background or the color of its text, based off of another variable or even uh, same variable if you happen to use that up here. So let's uh, show how to tie it to a variable. So we go to variable list here, and literally we're just going to drag and drop the variable that we're going to work with up to that screen. So I'm just kind of going through some variables here, and I'm going to find one that looks like a good fit for uh, showcasing a real-time update here. I'm looking for a real variable in this case, so let's see if I can get a real variable. Maybe I'll up. Here's one right here. So I'm going to take that guy there, drop it up there. So my variable name is now this guy. You can see how it embedded the IP address in here. What's cool about that is if I had multiple controllers, I could have all their data all displayed on the same web page. I believe up to 10 of them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. Okay. So now that's forever linked to that point, or at least until I go ahead and change it. Next thing I can do is I can go ahead and put a bar graph on the screen. Now these uh, bar graphs are not what you see is what you get. So just a, a heads up, even on this number here, or if I go ahead and place text on the screen, it's not going to change inside the editor in terms of reflecting maybe some of the properties I've done. So if I have this bar graph currently, it's kind of going left to right imagery. Even if I go uh, top to bottom or bottom to top and change its orientation in its internal properties, this here is not going to change. It's only going to affect the real-time screen. So let's uh, right-click and pick properties on that guy. And then uh, let's go ahead and uh, tie it to a variable again. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit here. 
over here. I'm going to go ahead and tie it to a variable. So there, I've gone ahead and tied it to a variable. Once again, you can do stuff like change the color of the unit if you want. So if I wanted a different color for the uh, bar going up and down, I could go ahead and do that. Sometimes people will do that uh, based on uh, level. Like, for example, if the level gets a, uh, a certain height, it'll go ahead and uh, change the color on it. Okay, so uh, let's see, bar direction. Um, we've got some different choices here. Up, down, left, right. So I'm going to stick with up in this case. Go ahead, hit apply. Also, I have bar color. We can go ahead and change that if we want. Okay, so I've placed a number on the screen. I've done a background image. I've placed a bar graph. The next thing I'm going to do here is show you a, another little option. I'm not going to get too much into detail here, but we have this uh, text tool here. So I can click on that, drop it on the screen. And what the text tool does is it allows you to tie a variable to a text display. So for example, if I were to go ahead and take a text, a, a, a variable down here and uh, drag it up into here, I could then have various different texts displayed off of that. So for example, say that variable that I put in here was at zero, it would display the text that's in that if it was 1, it would display the text that was placed here. If it was 2, it would display the text that was placed here. Okay. Same thing I could do is change its color. So it could simultaneously change its value and change its color based on various values. I'm not going to get uh, too much into this particular uh, text changing field. It's not commonly used, but if you had a use for dynamically changing text, on your screen, this is a neat little option you could go ahead and use. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel there. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete that off the screen. Next thing you can do is say you wanted to place another image on the screen. You could go ahead and go here and drag your image onto the screen. And if you double click on it, once again, you can go ahead and tie it to a variable. If you don't want to tie it to a variable, you can also just use the hash sign and then a number, like pound zero. And then what that'll do is it'll force it to whatever's in this zero value here. And right now I have no uh, files that I can actually tie to this, so I'm going to close that out. If I go over here to common, Import common files. Go ahead and import. I could go down here and pick this guy. So I've gone ahead and imported that guy now. If I wanted to, I could import some other files as well. Now, when I double click on this guy and I go image file for number zero. I can go ahead and link that guy in so I can hit apply and OK. Now it's not going to update this image to reflect the image that I just put there, but it will change that when it comes to real time. Part of the reason some of these don't get updated on the uh, design view is because they could literally be linked to usually eight different other texts or numbers or colors or, or images. Like in the case of this guy here, there could actually be eight different images shown here, which would be good for maybe an animation or something like that. We could also change its uh, rotation if we wanted to, its flip, stuff like that. Even, even its coordinates, we might be able to do some changes there. So I'm going to hit apply, OK. So we've got a bar graph, background image. We've got another little image put in here. We've got a number. 
uh, the last tool that we can hit here is your label link. Now label link essentially allows us to either place a link to another web page. If we do, then we can kind of say, hey, put it in its own window. Or put it in a new window. So you can kind of just keep it in this window or go ahead and open up a new window. So I'm not going to do a uh, link on here. I'm going to do a uh, more common, just uh, some text. So you can say how many characters you want. And then down here is where you can actually put in a label. So you could go, uh, so now test label one, two, three is essentially what's going to show up on my screen. Okay, so we've got labels, images, bar graph data. And then what we could do is go ahead and go up here to uh, File and pick Preview. This will give us a sample of what this page is going to look like in real time. So we can see there's the little FCN graphic. Uh, we can see this guy's hashed out, so he's not actually displaying the proper label there. Could be because I had uh, too many characters. I think I was set to 10 characters, but I actually needed more. These aren't real values from the RTU. These are just kind of simulated values. So let's go up here and fix this guy. I think uh, maybe I had uh, too many characters here. So uh, test label 9, 12. Looks like I had 12 characters. So let's change this guy to 12, hit apply, hit OK, file, preview. There it is, test label 1, 2, 3. Okay, so now that the page is pretty much doing what I want it to do, my next thing would be to push this down to the controller. So I can go Tool, Download Graphics, select my controller, pick this, then I'm going to say go ahead and push all these down to the controller. Go ahead, do download. Okay, so it's going ahead and pushing down all those pages to the controller. I'm just going to do a quick save on my project. And I'm going to go into my web browser here and go ahead and put in the IP address that came up with security. So stardom and uh, Yokogawa all in caps for my password. Now I'm in here. And uh, if I go to the APPF folder, I go to the uh, SGRP folder, I go to the graphic folder, go to the group folder. This is where it went ahead and put that. So now I can go to my uh, test page. .htm, I believe that's what I call this particular one. This is going to serve up that web page I just created. And if everything works out, we're going to see the FCN graphic that I put on, the Yokogawa background image, that test label that I put in. It's going to take a couple seconds, but hopefully these will start updating. And these are actual numbers pulling right off the uh, FCN RTU that I have right there. And there's that bar graph, and once again, it's filling up from uh, kind of bottom up towards the top. So we can kind of see here was a quick way of uh, putting together a web page. Now this is a Java applet. For some reason, if you tried running this and it didn't come up, you're probably going to want to go to java.com and make sure you do the uh, free Java download so you can actually run some Java applets. Okay, so that was a quick overview of the graphic portfolio tool. It allows you to put together multiple pages, put links and labels on the pages, put images on the pages, overlay data on the pages. If you want, you can uh, switch out text using the text tool here. You can do bar graphs if you want. There's the uh, important overlay data feature right there. Drag and drop. 
drag and drop the variables into the property pages here to link stuff together like we did there so drag from there drop in there set your various features and that should allow you to uh, put together a uh, basic web page uh, the other thing you can do is if you had some that were already on your RTU but not on your PC you could go ahead and do uh, upload graphics that'll pull in the graphics from the unit or if you wanted to get rid of graphics from the controller you could go ahead and do a delete graphics from the controller uh, that pretty much covers the basics on the graphic tool which is uh, part of the graphics portfolio in the InfoWell option on Stardom. I uh, hope this helped you out. Take care and have a great day.